Here we've got a result called the Associative Law for Scalar Multiplication, and we're asked to prove it. Okay, so it basically says that it doesn't matter if you multiply a vector with a scalar and then a second scalar versus multiplying the two scalars together first and then multiplying three by the or multiplying that by uh, with the vector. Okay, so how would we prove it? Well, in previous proofs we did component form. Let's try that again, right? So, um, with these kinds of proofs, the, the idea is to work component-wise with real numbers, real numbers that we know some of the basic laws about. Okay, so let's call this, say, star, and let's prove it. All right, so in component form, this is just the following. Okay. All right, so what I can do now is invoke the scalar multiplication of mu with a vector, right? Just do that in a component wise fashion. Okay, I guess I'll make that a square bracket. I'm not really sure why, but I just will. Yeah. Okay, and now what I can do is bring that lambda in. To get this. Well, now what? I'm confused. What do we do now? Okay, so that's just the same thing there. Anyone know? Yes. Yeah. So, what would we? Do? What can you say out loud? What we would do? The associative law for real numbers. Perfect. Yep. Or just maybe move them. Yep. Perfect. Thank you. Okay, so All right. And now we just put everything back again into vector form. Okay, so we're almost there. I can take these out the front. Scalar multiplication in a component wise fashion. Yep, and I know that that is just, well, hang on, let, let me do it like that. Okay, equals the, hopefully, the right-hand side of star. Yes, Whew, that was lucky. Okay, so the left-hand side is the right-hand side, hence W whole, uh, star holds.